What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're going to be talking about form manipulation tools in Revit. So when it comes to Revit, when it comes to advanced modeling, creating those uh, unique advanced shapes, uh, it's not only important to know how to generate the shape, but also then how to modify that shape. It's all about uh, designing, editing, and then revising our designs. So in this video I'm just going to be showing you some of the tools that Revit has to offer when it comes to uh, form manipulation. I'm going to be showing you how to uh, create massing and then how to edit that massing, how to manipulate that form. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to edit the profile, how to use the x-ray functionality, uh, how to add edges and profiles, and then also uh, how to dissolve the shape in the end if you want to well, start again or make some uh, some changes to the uh, elements that form that shape. So that's going to be the uh, kind of the, the the topic of today's video. Now, just quickly before we jump into the tutorial, I would like to take a moment to talk about today's video sponsor, and that is Snaptruth. So Snaptruth is a collaborative 3D BIM tool for conceptual design with just the right amount of automation. So you don't have to really install anything to use Snaptruth. It works straight out of your web browser and you just open up the web browser and it's there. You can use it right away. This tool gives you the ability to perform complex massing quickly uh, with automated areas, auto BIM, uh, climate studies, and so on. You also get real-time feedback uh, during your concept development. You can also use it as a collaboration tool. So you have the ability to invite either your professors, clients, um, perhaps consultants, and they can uh, come to your model and help either review or provide feedback for that model. Also, it includes a vast parametric library of things like furniture, uh, windows, doors, and so on. And most importantly to the Revit community, uh, you have the ability to export native Revit files out of Snaptruth. So you can open them straight into Revit without any loss of parameters or functionality. Also, uh, it allows you to export to all common formats like uh, IFC, FBX, OBJ, DWG, and so on. So if you're interested in checking out Snaptruth, I'm going to be, incl be including a link up in the cards above this video and then also down in the description below. Uh, now, before we get into the actual video, I just want to tell you, if you're serious about uh, learning more uh, about massing in Revit, I have an entire course for advanced modeling in Revit and massing in Revit. Uh, I'm going to include it uh, just down in the description below this video and also up in the cards above. It's on my website, BalkanArctic.com. There you can find all of my uh, Revit courses, but then also uh, you can find uh, my Revit templates. Uh, as well as uh, some high quality Revit families and uh, a plugin. So make sure to check it out if you're interested. So now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And as you can see here, I am at the home page. So I'm just going to go here to the new project. And for this uh, particular project, I'm just going to be using my custom Balkan Arctic template, the metric version, and then just click OK. As I said, that's available on my uh, website. I'm going to include a, a, a link to that as well up in the cards above. So anyways, as soon as Revit starts up, in order to create massing, we have to go here to Massing and Site. And before we create a new in-place mass, we have to turn on uh, Mass Visibility. So this is Show Mass. Once we turn this on, then massing is visible inside of Revit. So it's like a global massing on off switch. Then you go to in place mass here. You can name it. I'm just going to leave it as mass one. And now we can get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just create some uh, uh, 2D uh, geometry. So I'm just going to go here to the line tool and just create one simple line. Uh, next, I'm going to go to the circle tool and then let's create a circle here. Uh, then let's go to a rectangle and create a rectangle here. There we go. So now we have these three basic shapes. So all of these shapes, this uh, line here and let me just go to the default 3d view there we go 
So this line that we have here, I'm going to turning, be turning that into a surface. Uh, the circle is going to become a sphere. Uh, this is going to become just like a box shape. And then also I want to show you a shape which you can create out of, uh, out of kind of combining multiple profiles. And for that first we have to, well, create multiple profiles. So for that, uh, my favorite approach is to go and first create reference planes for each of the profiles. So you can create one reference plane here like this, then you create another one, and then finally the third one hit the escape key a few times uh, and then uh, what you want to do is name all three of these so you select them and then you can click here to name them and this one is going to be number one this one is going to be number two and this one is going to be number three now you can also name them by selecting them and then going to the properties and entering the name here and then hitting apply and as you can see it's the same result it's called three this was two and one. Okay, once we have this, uh, this is now in the floor plan view. This is the south elevation. So if I open up the south elevation, I'm looking at, the, at these reference planes and they're all one in front of the other. So now what I can do is uh, simply go here to perhaps the rectangle tool and then because we don't really have any reference plane selected in this particular view, uh, we can go here and we can specify by name and then let's use that reference plane number one. So once I specify that, I can just click OK and I can come here, as you can see this is kind of showing me the border of that reference plane. Obviously I can create things outside of the border, that's that's not a problem, but it's just showing you kind of, kind of where that's currently placed. So anyways, uh, let's create like a, I don't know, like a simple rectangle here. I hit the escape key a few times and then I'm just going to go back to the 3D view because I just like to include one more trick here because I think it's really cool. So you can select a shape that you have created like this and then you can go here uh, to the clipboard, click on duplicate, go to paste, paste it to the same place and now basically we have two rectangles kind of over each other. So now I can just go here to host and change the host because the second one is selected, kind of the duplicate, and if I place it on reference plane 2, it's going to jump on that second reference plane. And then I can repeat that, paste, align to the same place, and just change it to reference plane 3, and now we have three in a row on these three reference planes. So that's really cool. And now obviously we can select them uh, and then we can uh, edit them if we want, so you can make this one, I don't know, like wider like that. You can make this one, I don't know, more narrow. Uh, you can use the tab key to select individual uh, edges or sides and so on. So I don't know, we can, we can make it like that. That looks good. Okay, so uh, let's say we just want to have a sh Yeah, these three profiles are going to be generating our shape. Okay, so now let's create those shapes. So for shapes, I like to go here and switch to shaded mode, shaded view mode, just because it tends to look a little bit better. It's easier to see what's going on. And now let's zoom into our align element, go to create form, and it's just going to create basically a simple surface. Oops, I've moved it a little bit. So let's, yeah, let's just leave it like that. Okay, then let's go to the circle. You click on create form and it's going to give you this option. Do you want a cylinder or a circle or a, sorry, a sphere? And then I'm just going to select that sphere and there we go. And see when it's shaded, it gives it that little, well, shade. So it's a bit easier to see what's going on. Uh, then for the rectangle, let's go to create form. So it creates a box. And then finally, you want to select all three profiles, go to create form, and then it creates like a blend uh, from those profiles. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. Okay, now it's time for form manipulation. And I want to start with this uh, with this surface. So I can select it and then extend it like this and make it larger or, uh, or I can select this side and then extend it there. Uh, and this little tool that we're using that's called a gizmo. So I can do that. But what if I want to change it even further? Well, let's now explore uh, when we select this and make sure to select the whole thing. So when the whole thing highlights, not just one edge, but the whole thing. If you cannot get to that, use the tab key once or twice and then it's going to highlight the whole thing. You click the select and then here you get the form element tools. So these are kind of for form manipulation. 
So what you can do here is go to perhaps add profile and now profiles are horizontal lines. So basically what a profile is, Revit looks at this surface as a blend between a line at the bottom and a line at the top because we had one line on the bottom and then it's just kind of extruded that line. Uh, so basically it looks as at, at these horizontal lines as profiles. So if I want to come in and place additional lines here, I can place them and those are additional profiles. So if I come to the surface again, go again to add profile, I can get an additional profile, but it cannot be vertical. So it can only be placed here on the kind of horizontal axis. Hit the escape key a couple of times. And then I can select those profiles and I can use them to, well, change the shape of the surface. See, that's quite cool. So you can actually edit this and then you can even move it side to side like that. You can move this one either to that side or to this side. So you can create some funky geometry really quickly simply by adding that one uh, that one or two profiles. Now also what you can do apart from profiles uh, is you can come in here, select the entire shape. So again, using the tab key and you can add edges. So edges run alongside the extrusion. So in this case, this is a a horizontal line that has been extruded up. So that up motion, that's your edge. So edge is vertical in this case. And now if I go here to add edge, if I just come closer, as you can see, it can add multiple edges here. Now the downside of the edges, if you select an edge, and if you want to move it like this, it's going to kind of break that surface, I guess you can say. So that's that's the kind of annoying part with the edges. But yeah, that's that's how it works. Now also one quick thing to mention, when you have an edge like this, you can see that this gizmo, it's basically showing you, well, X, Y, X, Y, and Z axis. Now if I hit the space key, it's going to flip. So basically it's going to have the same Z axis, but the X and Y axis are now kind of following this shape. So see how it's kind of following this direction and this orange arrow continues that, and then this orange arrow continues this. So you can toggle between these with the space key, and then you can kind of extend this a bit further if you want. And yeah, there we go. I actually have a whole uh, lesson inside of my, uh, my massing uh, or advanced modeling and massing course where I explain all of this. So uh, that's something that uh, if you want to check it out, it's included there as well, kind of uh, a bit more extensively. Okay, so now moving forward uh, for the sphere, what I just want to show you is if I select the entire sphere, if I go here to uh, edit profile, it's going to basically show us what this is made out of. So it's basically we have this axis and then this is the profile that's being rotated around that axis. So if I make any changes, so for example, if I make a change here, just like that. And then if I use the split element tool and then use trim and extend to corner like that, and it looks like a bomb from a cartoon. But then as you can see, I can change that profile and now it looks well like this. So you can play around with that shape by editing the profile. Same thing goes here with the rectangle. So if I select the whole thing and then go to edit profile. So again, not the line, but you have to use the tab key to select the entire thing. Go to edit profile and then you can select if you select the line or an element on the bottom, it's going to allow you to edit that bottom element. But now if I go again to edit profile and if I select something on top, it's going to select that bottom or uh, that top profile. So you can now make some changes here. So it's a really unique way of editing your kind of geometry inside of Revit. And then finally, for a situation such as this one, and then if I just select it, uh, for this, I just want to show you the x-ray feature, just because uh, in this case, as you can see, we have three profiles, one on in the beginning, one in the end, and then we have something in the middle, but it's really hard to see. As you can see, when I hover over it, we can kind of see it's there, but it's really hard to pinpoint. So if I just select this entire shape and then go into x-ray mode, now I can easily make changes to all of these elements. I can select this point here, for example, I can stretch it out. I can use the, the space key if I want to kind of pull it in, I don't know. So I can make any changes that I want. And then if I just select that shape again, 
and go to x-ray, I can turn it off. Also, one important thing to note, only one element can be uh, in x-ray mode at any given time. So if I want to go to this, and if I want to turn this into x-ray mode, you can see that this is no longer in x-ray mode. So that's just important thing to note. Uh, and also, uh, if at any point you feel like, well, uh, this that they have created, uh, I, I don't like it, I want to go back to the beginning, I want to go back to kind of original shapes that, uh, that this is made out of, you can always go to dissolve and it's basically going to dissolve that. And in this case, uh, it we started with a circle, but because we have modified that, it dissolved it into, well, this. And also it's going to add this little uh, point and whatever you dissolve, it's going to include those points. So if you dissolve this, it's going to include all of the points on each profile. So that's just something that you'll see. I don't, I'm not really sure why it does that, but it does that, so just keep that in mind. And there we go. Those are form manipulation tools in Revit. I hope you have enjoyed this. And as I said, if you're interested in learning more about this, I have an entire course on creating numerous different interesting shapes in Revit and just how Revit uh, approaches really complex geometry and turning that into actual buildings. So I'm going to include that just below this video in the description and then, as I said, up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.